Hi, I'm so glad that you joined us again for our Good News Club that we're trying to do online because we're not able to meet with you at this time. We're so happy to have you here, and I hope that you saw the story, that the Bible account that Shelley shared with you of Jairus, and today I'm going to share with you our missionary account. My name is Miss Linda. Perhaps some of you remember me as your teacher for Good News Club. But today I'm going to be teaching you a missionary story. Now a missionary is someone whose job it is to go and tell other people the good news about Jesus. The good news that Jesus died and he rose again. And we can have eternal life through him because he died to forgive us for our sins. The missionary that I'm going to tell you about today, he lived about 150 years ago. Actually more than 150 years ago. But the same God that he served, the same God that answered his prayers, he's the same God that we serve if we've believed in Jesus as our Savior. And he can answer our prayers and he can work in our lives just the same as he did for this man that I'm going to tell you about. This man's name was Hudson. Talk, talk, talk. Hudson's father loved to talk at the table. And Hudson never got tired of listening to his father talking because his father talked about a wonderful place called China. And Hudson loved to hear about China. Now, I want to tell you about China. I want to show you a map here of China. Hudson lived in this little tiny country called England. That's in red that you can see. And China was the green, big country. You can see how much bigger China was. And here we see a map of China up here. China was huge. And Hudson's father used to get so excited when he was talking about China that he would bang the table with his fist and say, there needs to be more missionaries going to China. We need to send more missionaries because there are millions of people in China who don't know about Jesus. Now, before Hudson was born, Hudson's father and mother had prayed. And they said to God, if you give us a boy, we want him to be a missionary to China. Well, one night while they were sitting at the table, Hudson was only five years old. And he piped up in his little five-year-old voice and said, Papa? When I get to be a man, I'm going to go to be a, China, a missionary to China. Well, Hudson's father and mother, they looked at each other and they smiled. They really would have liked Hudson to go to China to be a missionary, but they didn't think that was possible because, you see, Hudson was very sickly and he was small for his age. In fact, he was so sickly that he wasn't even able to go to school till he was 11 years old. So while all the other boys and girls were making friends and playing games at school, Hudson had to stay home. But he did have the best teachers. He had his lovely mother, and he had his strict father, who loved him as well. And they taught him all the same subjects that all the other boys and girls in England would have had to have learned. And Hudson loved to read. He loved so much to read. He would read out loud to his mother when she was sewing and when she was doing her ironing or her baking. And he loved to read alone also. In fact, at night he would be reading a book and his mother would say, Hudson, it's time to go to bed. And it disappointed him so much because he would be at a good part or he didn't want to put his book down. And he thought, oh, I wish so much that I didn't have to stop reading. Well, in those days, there was no electricity. In fact, they had a candle. They had to light their house by candle at night. So when Hudson went to his room and he got ready for bed, his mother would come and she'd take the candle away. So there was no light in the room. So Hudson would not be able to read in bed. But he thought, how could I read longer when I really want to read at night? And he had an idea. He said, Mama, she saves the ends to the candles. If I could just take some of those up to my room and I could light an end to the candle, I could read at least as long as the candle would last. That would give me some more time to read. 
but he wasn't sure how he was going to do it without his mother knowing. One day he had an opportunity. There was a guest that had come to stay at the house and had come to visit with his parents. His parents and the guest were in the other room and they were talking and Hudson snuck out to where the little ends of the candle were kept and he took the ends of the candle and he stuffed them in his deepest pocket and then he proceeded to go to bed. But his mother called him, Hudson, why don't you come and say good night to our friend? So Hudson went in and he thought, well, this will be quick. So he said good night to the friend, but this friend said, oh, come over, Hudson. I haven't seen you for so long. Just come and sit on my knee. So Hudson came and politely sat on the man's knee. He would have loved to have squirmed away and went to bed, but that wouldn't have been very polite. The man put him on his knee, and the man was sitting right next to the fireplace where there was a fire. And he put Hudson on the knee closest to the fire. And Hudson's pocket that had the candle ends in it was right next to the fire. Hudson thought it would be forever until he got out of there. Finally, when his mother said, Hudson, you can go to bed, he jumped up and he went quickly to bed. But a few minutes later, when his mother came to take the candle, she found Hudson. There he was with a greasy mess of melted candles in his pocket. Hudson was sad. He was sad, first of all, because his plan did not work. But he was most sad when he looked at his mother's face because she was so disappointed in him because he had deceived her. And big tears rolled down Hudson's face. When Hudson was 13 years old, he had to find a job just like all the other boys in England at that time. He went to work with his father. His father was a druggist. That's kind of like a pharmacist today. He went to work for his father and he learned how to measure and he learned how to make the medicines that people needed. And Hudson really enjoyed his job. But down deep inside, Hudson was not very happy. You see, Hudson had stopped reading his Bible and when his father read his Bible at lunch and at supper together as a family, Hudson wasn't really interested. He had even stopped praying. He was just starting to dream of making lots of money and dream of having horses and having a fancy house. Do you know why Hudson wasn't very happy? Hudson wasn't very happy because all along Hudson had heard the stories of Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. But Hudson had never known Jesus himself. Hudson had never called out to Jesus to have the sins forgiven in his own heart. He just knew a lot in his head, but he didn't know it in his heart. And so Hudson was very sad inside, and yet he didn't know why. One day when Hudson was 17 years old, he was walking around the house. His father wasn't home. His mother was gone for weeks. And he was bored. He didn't know what to do. He was walking around the house looking for what to do. Did you ever feel bored like that? Well, Hudson looked for his mother or for, through his father's books. He thought, maybe there's a good book here to read. But there was no good book here to read. Then he saw a basket on the floor, kind of like this. And it had some Bible booklets in it. So he picked one up and he thought, well, this one looks good. I think I'll read this. So he went out to the barn and decided that he would read out in the barn. He probably found a nice pile of hay to lay in. There in the barn, Hudson began to read. And something amazed him. He read the words, the finished work of Christ. He thought, what does that mean? The finished work of Christ. And then he read the verse about when Jesus was on the cross and Jesus said, it is finished. Hudson yelled out loud, what is finished? And then he realized, 
I know what is finished. The payment for my sin. The punishment for my sin has been paid for. It is finished. Jesus finished it. There's nothing I can do to make myself good enough to cover up all the sins that I've done. Jesus took the punishment for all of them, and it's finished. And at that moment, Hudson called out to Jesus, and he said, Jesus, thank you for taking the punishment for my sin. Thank you. There's nothing I can do. All I can do is believe on you and say thank you and accept you as my Savior. And Hudson was so happy. Afterwards, he had this joy in his heart. He was no longer sad. And he said, I have to tell someone. Who can I tell? He said, I know who I'll tell. I'll tell my sister, Amelia. Hudson told his sister, Amelia. And Amelia was so happy. But Hudson said, please, Amelia, don't tell anyone else. I want to tell my family myself. Amelia was so happy. She may have had tears coming down her face because she had been praying for years for Hudson, that Hudson would come to know Jesus as his Savior. A few weeks later, Hudson's mother finally came home. And Hudson, when he saw her coming, he ran out the door and he yelled, Mother, Mother, guess what? I have some good news to tell you. And she said, Hudson, I already know. I have been happy for your good news for several weeks. Hudson said, How did you know? Did Amelia tell you? She said, no. She said, Hudson, when I was away one day, I had this feeling that I needed to pray for you. And I went to my room and I prayed and prayed for a long time. I prayed. And then I felt in my heart from God that he had answered my prayer. And do you know what, Hudson? I knew that you had believed in Jesus and I was so happy. Hudson said, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so glad. We all know that I know Jesus as my Savior now. Hudson and his mother had both been praying, or Hudson's mother had been praying at the same time they found out that Hudson was in the barn and was praying to God. Isn't that amazing? Hudson was so happy that he had believed in Jesus as his Savior, he just had to tell others. So he and Amelia every Sunday went out on the streets and they knocked on their neighbor's doors and they told their neighbors about Jesus. Hudson wanted so much to please Jesus and there were times when he failed, just like we all do. And that's when we need to go back to Jesus and confess to him that we've done wrong things. But that doesn't make us not be a child of God anymore because we've already believed in Jesus as our Savior. And Hudson had times like that and he began to feel like, I just really want to please Jesus with my whole life. And one day he prayed to God and he said, Jesus, I want to do anything you want. I want to go anywhere you want me to go. Just for you, whatever you want. And in his heart, he felt God say, okay, then go to China for me. Go to China? That had been his dream since he was a little boy. He couldn't think of anything better to do than go to China, to go to people who had never heard of Jesus, probably never even heard the name Jesus, and tell them about who he was and give them the hope and the joy that he had. He was so excited. He said, I got to get started right away. What can I do to prepare myself to go to China? He began by getting up every morning at five o'clock in the morning. He got up so he could read his Bible and he could pray and spend time with God. And I hope you are doing that. Maybe not at five o'clock in the morning, but I hope that you're getting up in the morning or at night sometime that you are reading your Bible and spending time to, with God because Hudson needed to know God and to know his word so that he would be able to tell others. Another thing he did was he began to learn the Chinese language. Since he was going to be speaking to the Chinese, he would need to know their language. And every day after work, he began to go for a walk. Remember, I said he was a little bit sickly. And so he needed to, he went for a walk in order to be able to build up his immune system. And in order to be able to be healthy, he would be out in the fresh air. 
And you know what else he did? And this is very unusual. He started to sleep on a hard bed. That's because he knew that when you go to the mission field or to another country, you may not have a soft bed to sleep on. You might even have to sleep on the ground. Hudson was going to prepare himself every way he could so that when he went to China, he would be everything God wanted him to be. Hudson heard that there was a minister in the area that had a book on China. And so Hudson went to that minister and he said, could I borrow your book on China? And the man, the minister said, surely. But he said, why do you want to read about China? Hudson said, because God asked me to go to China and tell the people about Jesus. Well, how will you get there, said the man. I don't know, said Hudson, but I do know that when Jesus sent the disciples to go and tell others about, G about himself, he provided for them, and I'm trusting that he's going to provide for me as well. As Hudson read the book about China, he realized there was a whole lot more of preparation he needed to do. He realized that the people in China had sicknesses and diseases that were not able to be helped in China. He wanted to learn more about medicine, more than his father could teach him, so that he would be able to go and help the people. If he could help them with their physical sickness, then he would be able to tell, tell them about Jesus who could help them with their spiritual sickness, who could help them to know how they could have forgiveness too from the punishment for sins. Hudson began to pray. He prayed, Lord, I need to learn more about medicine, but I don't know how. I don't know who can teach me. And God answered his prayer. That same God that we have today that answers our prayers, he answered Hudson's prayer. Hudson found out about a Christian doctor who, he was a surgeon, and he was looking for a helper. And Hudson went to him and asked if he could be his helper. And sure enough, the doctor was glad. His name was Dr. Hardy. Dr. Hardy was glad to have Hudson as his assistant. And Hudson loved to work for Dr. Hardy. Dr. Hardy was happy and joyful. And Dr. Hardy was an excellent doctor. He taught Hudson many things that Hudson would have never learned otherwise. But when Hud And Hudson had to go and live with Dr. Hardy because it was far away from where he lived. But while he was living there, he learned so much more than just medicine. And next time that we have a missionary time on our online Good News Club, I'm going to tell you what else he learned when he was at Dr. Hardy's place. Now, you know, boys and girls, God is still calling boys and girls and men and women today to go to other countries or even in their own country to tell people about Jesus. One way we can be sure we're ready is to be sure that we know Jesus, not just know about him in our heads, but know him because we know he is our savior from our sin. And then we can trust that whatever God is using in our life, whatever God is using in your life, he is using you for a reason. He is using that for a reason because he has something for you. And I'm going to pray here. I'm going to pray that God would show you and God would make you what he wants, you to, make, wants to make out of your life so that you can be your best for him. So let's pray together. Dear Lord, I thank you for every boy and girl who's listening and watching the story of Hudson Taylor. I thank you that we know that we have you and you are a mighty God and that you do things today even as you have in his life. I pray that you'd help all of us, boys and girls and me as well, that we would trust you in that and I pray if there's boys and girls out there that you're preparing their hearts even now to be a missionary either here or abroad, that you would prepare their hearts and that you would help them to have a heart that is willing to say, yes, Lord, I'll go. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
I hope, boys and girls, that we'll see you again next time. You have a good day now. Bye-bye.